My name is Theo Emery, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about my book Hellfire Boys, which is out this November from Little Brown. Hellfire Boys is a narrative history of the U.S. Chemical Warfare Service in World War I. In some ways, I think of this as my accidental book. And I say that because I'm not a military historian. I'm not an expert in chemical weapons or chemical warfare. I didn't even know that much about World War I before I started this project. But what I am is a journalist, and journalists love to tell great stories. At the heart of Hellfire Boys is a fascinating story that almost nobody knows today. It's the story of how, when the United States entered World War I in April of 1917, uh, the U.S. Army had no chemical weapons and no capacity to wage chemical warfare and no means of protecting its soldiers on the Western Front of Europe. And so, in a mere 18 months, uh, starting from scratch, the U.S. government built uh, from nothing the world's largest arsenal of chemical weapons and greatest capacity for waging chemical warfare, eventually surpassing even our allies in Europe and Germany itself, which had started chemical warfare in 1915. Uh, some people have described the birth of the U.S. Chemical Warfare Service as the Manhattan Project of World War I, a massive cooperative effort of scientists, soldiers, academia, and government, all toward the end of creating uh, the deadliest weapons known to man at that time. They were, in fact, uh, the first weapons of mass destruction of the 20th century, chemical weapons. I try to tell three stories in the book. I tell the story of scientists, I tell the story of soldiers, and I tell the story of a spy. Uh, the story of the scientists is right here in Washington, on the campus of American University, where the government established uh, a secret chemical weapons research lab called the American University Experiment Station. Eventually, there were more than 100 buildings and almost 2,000 soldiers and scientists working there, some of whom called the experiment station Mustard Hill because of all the tests that were carried out with mustard gas. One of the fruits of their labor was a new secret weapon uh, that very few people knew what was in it or how to make it uh, or even what it was called. Eventually, it was called Lewisite for the man who discovered it, a man named Winford Lee Lewis, who was supposedly 72 times more toxic than mustard gas and it was produced at a secret plant outside Cleveland, Ohio, in a little town called Willoughby, uh, in a plant that was so mysterious and so hush-hush that the soldiers who worked there called it the mousetrap, because the soldiers who went in never came out. Uh, I also tell the story of soldiers. Uh, I follow several young men, a young man from Lawrence, Massachusetts, named Harold Higginbottom, and a young chemist from Yonkers, New York, named Thomas Jabine, who enlist in a new regiment. It's called the 30th Engineers, Gas and Flame, uh, and the press soon seized on a new name for it. They called it the Hellfire Battalion, or the Hellfire Regiment. And the soldiers who enlisted in it, they called the Hellfire Boys. And that's where the book takes its title. Uh, I follow them as they train at American University, and they march out of Washington, D.C. in a blizzard on Christmas Day of 1917, uh, and soon set sail for Europe, where they spend the rest of the war uh, fighting in almost every major battle on the Western Front, all the way through to the Meuse-Argonne Offensive in autumn of 1918, the battle which ended World War I. Finally, I tell the story of a spy named Walter Scheel, uh, who was part of a ship bomb plot to set fire to merchant ships crossing the Atlantic. He had fled to Cuba and spent two years there in hiding before he was discovered in 1918 and turned over to the Americans. This part of the story, to the best of my knowledge, has never been told. Uh, he was convinced, on pain of death, uh, that he should work for the Americans against his fatherland of Germany. And Dr. Scheel did just that. He was sent up to a, uh, another secret lab north of New York City, close to Peekskill, New York, and for the remainder of the war, worked on experiments on chemical weapons and explosive and incendiary devices and airplane technology, all on behalf of the United States against uh, his, uh, his fatherland of Germany. So these are the stories that I set out to tell in Hellfire Boys. Um, I think it's a, a, a gripping, fascinating story, and I hope you agree. Um, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is at T. Emery. That's at T-E-M-E-R-Y. I hope you read the book. If you do, tell me what you think. Thank you.